the journey you're going on right now, and I figured I could help you out. Oh, so you know I'm enduring some of the absolute worst horror movies imaginable! Yes. So instead I'm gonna show you a good horror film. Well, it's about time. The classic masterpiece known only as... See No Evil. You have got to be kidding me. Glenn Thomas Jacobs. Of course we all know him now as the most recent and definitely most prestigious mayor of Tennessee. But older fans of this beloved gentleman may remember that he once actually brutally murdered his parents, went to a mental asylum, broke out, tried to murder his brother and father, killed his girlfriend and then raped her corpse, forced a woman to marry him against her will before raping her, crippling a middle-aged woman on pure steel before electrocuting the testicles of her son on live TV. He's such an inspiration. Busted. But during his busy life of politics and mass murder, our brilliant mayor of Tennessee also dove into the world of acting, giving us the 2006 cult classic known only as... See No Evil. So what do we have here on Rotten Tomatoes? See No Evil is packed with cliches from countless other teen slasher films, making for a predictable, scare-free waste of time. <laughs> They're just jealous of its cinematic brilliance. They're probably virgins. Hell yeah. Well, Mayor Glenn Jacobs performs all of his own stunts in this film too, so obviously this is gonna be a classic, and you're all about to see why. Kane's name in this is Jacob Goodnight. Does that sound the least bit threatening to you? Ah, WWE films. The death of cinema as we know it. Shut the fuck up! Sorry. So the film opens up with some cops investigating an old house, but immediately this film shows off its true originality with its insane editing skills. Actually, it's just blatantly ripping off Saw's editing. Well, Saw sucks. So what? So they hear a scream and decide to burst in to investigate. That's the police! Hey, shouldn't we wait for backup? You wait. <laughs> what are these, cops or 12-year-old kids? Alright, so we're only two minutes in, and I guess they do take a little bit of inspiration from the Saw movies, maybe? You guess? Shut up. They find a bunch of religious stuff lying around before discovering a terrified woman. We don't get to see her face just yet, but it's not long before our lovely mayor of Tennessee shows up. <laughs> Your arm's off! No, it isn't. But what's that then? We also see that her eyeballs have been removed. So she doesn't have to see how awful this movie is, the lucky bitch! Oh my god! But one thing I never understood is, the other cop is called Williams, right? Kane has absolutely every opportunity to kill him, but he doesn't. Like, there's no real reason for him to run away. He fires one gunshot and Kane runs away like a pussy. He's this big, seven-foot-tall monster who we see later isn't scared of a damn thing, but one gunshot from a cop is enough to send him running away. Oh, well, the cops arrive on the scene to find loads more corpses, all with their eyes removed, but then we truly see the epitome of horror. Well, 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 Vince. This isn't very PG. Son of a bitch. So after they continue stealing from Saw, we cut to four years later to see Williams, who is supposedly traumatized by these events. The fuck do you mean supposedly? Look at him. He's terrified. He's tormented by these memories. He's haunted by him. No, he's not. Look at him. 
Tommy Jarvis in Friday the 13th part 6 Jason lives. You could tell he was messed up and still tormented by his past. Halloween H2O 20 years later, Laurie Strode genuinely was scarred for life because of her brother's actions. But here he's just casually taking a piss, has a random memory of it, but he doesn't even react to it. Nah, that happens. Time to have a shit next. Not so good. So we then cut to a bunch of young criminals. Who are guilty of stealing from other horror franchises. But like, there's really not any subtlety with any of these characters. Like, at all. As a matter of fact, they give us a caption to explain every. Single. One of them. Keep it down back there. It kinda looks like a cheesy ass sitcom in me, why do they all get these awful freeze frames? The main characters I can kinda understand, but they even do it with people who don't do a damn thing in the whole movie. And why do they tell us any of this? Us knowing their crimes, one, doesn't really help us as they don't concern the plot one bit, and two, we're not gonna remember them anyway. This has more characters than a Marvel film. That's not a bad deal. Literally, all the women do is bitch about each other, and considering all of these people are criminals and douchebags, aren't we rooting for the mayor of Tennessee to murder them all? I mean, is that the intention? To root for the serial killer? In fact, wait a minute, this is the exact same setup as Saw 2, which came out just one year earlier. What? No, it's not. Saw 2 is a bunch of criminals all locked in a worn down building and chased by a serial killer. Well, I think you're just reaching. Oh my god. So Chavo Guerrero and Shelton Benjamin here get into a fight and everyone just kind of carries on afterwards as if nothing happened. So, uh, it's kind of pointless. Did you forget they were criminals? Because just in case you did, there's a fucking song to remind you about it. Whose side are you on right now? I'm so confused. Good comeback. So they take the juveniles to an abandoned hotel where a certain section, the penthouse, is off limits due to a fire that broke out there and is supposedly perfect for harboring professional wrestlers turned serial killers turned actors turned politicians. They're very precise. Yeah. So they have to stay here for three days and basically clean up the place, and in exchange they'll get their sentences reduced. And for some reason they're all being watched by one cop. Like, they didn't think to send a whole police force or something like that, they just send one police officer, who kinda sucks at his job, we'll get to that later, but they really think these eight criminals are gonna all listen to this one guy. I'm Margaret Gay. I'm involved in the renovation of historical landmarks. This property was donated to us a few years ago. You know, I'll let it slide that they haven't been able to check every single room since the penthouse is off limits. But then how the hell did Kane manage to get in there undetected? It's not like he's Rey Mysterio and could just sneak on through, especially being wanted. It's simple. So Chavo Guerrero is forced to mop the toilets while Kane spies on him through an eye hole in the wall, kind of like a 12 year old boy looking at some tits. Before this bird Christine is sweeping up, but whoop, gotta get a fake out jump scare in there from my mate Kira. It turns out Chavo framed Kira and also beat her up, and for some reason they put them together in the same camp. Uh, why the fuck would you do that? Gee, I wonder what could possibly go wrong. You might as well put Chris Brown and Rihanna back together while you're at it. As a matter of fact, the black lady brings this up to Williams later on in the movie. What I'm talking about is Kira used to work for that prick out on the streets. What? Yeah, when he wasn't beating her ass. She rolled over on him and now, because of you guys, he's here and he's been fucking stalking her the whole time. Okay, okay. We didn't know. How the hell did you not know? I mean, surely you did background checks for every one of these people, right, you dumbass? The fuck kind of cop are you? I'll deal with it. Guess what? He, he never does. It's never brought up again for the rest of the fucking movie. This is fucking retarded. Dude, are you- Shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> you scared me. But anyway, of course there's always this one asshole who has to investigate the restricted area. And apparently there's hidden passages which aren't really that hidden if they've been there 20 seconds and already know about them. Why not? Oh yeah, and also there's a safe hidden somewhere in the hotel. You telling me after 35 years, no one's found this so-called safe? He's got a point. So as Christine washes some brushes, Williams purrs over her. Oh great, he's an asshole too. Are we supposed to like any of these fucking people? Well, maybe here they'll become more charming. What's up, bitch? I mean, uh, rich? Oh, <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> did you did you get that original joke, Rob? Did you get it? Did you get it? He he said rich, but since rich rhymes with bitch, 
You know, because it's such an original fucking joke, right? Like, I didn't hear that shit a million times in high school. Yeah, I'm just sitting there doing my fucking homework, minding my business. And then some bastard comes up here with all of his dickheaded friends. And he's like, oh, what's up, bitch? Oh, I mean rich. And everybody in the fucking classroom laughs because they don't have any fucking sense of humor. And they never heard that joke the past thousand times they've done it. I hope this fucking character dies. Bitch. Yeah, well, they'll order some takeaway and take some drugs next. Insert hot chick getting naked in a shower or the serial killer watches her cliche. And if she was dead, he'd probably fuck her too. What are you talking about? She does actually spot the peephole and assumes it's Mike, but he shows up anyway, which freaks her out a little. And despite Williams earlier promising to look into the situation with Kira and Mike, here's Mike getting in the shower, putting his hands on her again. At least I got the cops right. But Christine simply asks him to let her go. And he does. Why the hell would he listen? <laughs> what is he, 10? Is it bad that I don't even want Mike to get his comeuppance? I kind of just want to see him actually give Kane a run for his money. Fucking moron! Oh, but wait, we're not done with the characters and subplots yet. So here we have another one where instead of looking into the domestic abuse situation, Williams is deciding to flirt with this Hannah chick who's engaged but isn't sure if he's the right guy or not. Do you give a shit about this? Nope. Skip it. Why? So Richie and Ty, and I only remember their names because Rich here actually did make a note of them. You're quite welcome. Investigate the forbidden part of the hotel, and weirdly, they come across bottles of alcohol. I guess Kane has to calm his nerves somehow. Oh, and they also find a fresh corpse with no eyes. But instead of running and screaming like, I don't know, any normal person might do, they have to search him for money because, you know, the criminals, just in case you forgot that they were criminals. No shit. And it's the white guy who runs away while the black guy stands his ground and investigates the dead body. So unrealistic. I think you're wrong, though. I must admit, though, Kane's first real appearance is actually fucking awesome! He comes out of the lift behind Richie, we just see a smirk, and it is so badass. But then when he starts killing him, it's just edited far too rapidly to really enjoy or take in what the hell has happened. Saw had the editing because they were traps, and the fast-paced cutting allowed us to see every aspect of that trap in a short period of time. They were also on a low budget, at least the first one was, but this had the WWE funding it! So close, movie. So close. You know what? You just don't appreciate true art. That's why cinematic excrement's better than you. Of course it is. Oh, but wait, this Hannah chick is on the move. Let's see where this is going. I guess I'm not waiting on anything. Bitch, you are so dead. I'm just waiting for the blood dripping down on her cliche. From. There was nowhere! I thought teleportation was the Undertaker's thing. But him trying to poke her eye out just looks hilarious. Oh, I'm gonna get ya! Then he puts it in a jar like an episode of Futurama. Meanwhile, Christine and Kira plan to escape out the atrium, but before they get a chance, Kira falls quicker than the movie's box office gross. Ow! Bastard. Would I say so? Before the mayor of Tennessee arrives and hooks the bitch and escapes with her in the dumbwaiter, Kane seemed to have a thing for punk rock chicks around this time, didn't he? Do you know? Oh yeah, and despite Kane hooking Kira in the fucking shoulder, she doesn't really show any signs of it for the rest of the film. Wait, she survives? No, she doesn't just survive, but like, there's no mark. Th there's no mark, no blood, she doesn't even sell it or anything, she's perfectly fine like it didn't even hurt, I guess she's John Cena. Oh my god. The others find out what's been going on and rush to the penthouse where all the action can take place. What happened to you? What? Nothing. That's not even my- Ah, now we get the blood dripping down onto a character cliche. Oh, I knew you wouldn't let me down, movie. You got anything else better to do? Anyway, the others continue to investigate, but just in case you forgot Chavo's a douchebag and a criminal, look, he's over here vandalizing things randomly. But then we get the most amazing part of the entire film. Okay, that's amazing. His footsteps shake the entire house. Is he a T-Rex? What the fuck is going on? So the black chick describes the mayor of Tennessee to Williams, who ends up remembering him. Huh. What are the odds that Kane just so happens to be doing this during Williams' time on the job? Last time he killed all of his victims except one. You think he was keeping her? 
because she had tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, that doesn't make any sense. How did anyone deliver this straight face? You think he was keeping her? She had tattoos. So to summarize, he apparently saved this previous lady because she had religious tattoos, and ironically, Kira also has religious tattoos. This should be called Sino coincidences. Why would religious tattoos stop him? It's fucking tattoos. Oh shit! Oh shit, Michael! Oh shit! Wait! 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 Look, I got a crucifix. Huh. Alright. My problem with this movie is that it's just the same cliche, generic- <laughs> So okay, that was fucking amazing! Fuck yeah it was. We'll see. Anyway, this zoom out looks pretty damn cool. But, then it cuts right back to them again, so it was kind of pointless. Things. Like a shitty script. Aha! Shut up, you asshole. You're a bad influence. So Kane's got Kira locked up in this cage and decides to give her a very important message. Inflicting pain turns me on. Also, why hasn't he removed her eyes? I mean, even the woman at the start of the film who we left alive, he still took her eyes out. Well, hmm. It's actually a good point. This movie kind of sucks. I told you this shit is gold. But he proceeds to take her to his torture chamber. Ooh. Help! Wow, that sounded convincing. Sounds more like she needs help finding a parking space. Not fighting for a damn life. Help! But Richie is somehow still alive. Kane removes his eyes, but it's not nearly as funny this time because he's just getting old now. You remember when I said that you could do better than Kira? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't mean this much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. Also, while Kane has an uber boner over her crucifix, all I can think of is that this was around the same time Vince McMahon was feuding with God. Yeah, WWE seemed to have some really serious religion issues around this time. Anyway, we enter flashback mode as we see some short clips of Kane being mistreated by his mother. Because a slasher villain serial killer being fueled by his mom has never been done before! Yeah, nice to know it follows Rob Zombie's Halloween logic by having this little tiny ass kid grow up to be this huge fucking monster. Somehow. In fact, an angry, evil religious mother. This film is ripping off Carrie as well! Jesus Christ! But don't worry about that, we're 47 minutes in, so now it's time for the cliche, generic horror movie sex scene. For some reason, they're fucking in a rat-infested hotel on a dusty-ass bed. Eh, I guess I can think of worse places I've fucked. What the fuck, man? And apparently Kane has rigged up every single bed in this damn hotel so it triggers whenever people have sex or something. Why does he even do this when it's abandoned? Why if someone just naps and fidgets a lot? And how many beds must there be in this place? Eh, it doesn't matter. James Franco's twin checks out this mirror that his girlfriend is suspicious about. Oh, let me guess. Kane is gonna jump out of the mirror ripping off Halloween Resurrection? Get up, go! Oh! Well, damn. That was actually kinda cool. Then he breaks through the wall like the damn Kool-Aid man before chasing them away. And for some reason we get a quick shot of a rat running away. I mean, it's not like he's chasing the rat, it's just weird. They decide to hide in a closet because apparently a wooden door will stop a 7 foot tall destructive machine more than just... ...continuous running. He just jumped through a mirror unharmed! But in the closet, guess what? They just so happen to discover a hose to tie themselves to to escape. What are the fucking odds? I have to admit though, there is some amazing suspense built here. She starts to get lowered down, but then her boyfriend falls silent. After a while, she starts to get pulled back up and it's Kane, but she begs for mercy. Very poor choice of words. <laughs> oh! Jesus! And then some dogs are there, and eat her for some reason. Uh, 
Do they not know how dogs work? I mean, I understand if it was like some random stray dog that she just found on the street. But if you take care of a dog and you love them, the dog's not gonna fucking eat you. Why would the dog eat her in that situation? It doesn't make any sense. Cats might do that because cats are assholes. It's stuck. Move. <clears throat> No shit! Nah, who cares, that was funny. Oh my god, shit! Yes! Here it is! The greatest matchup of all time! Business is about to pick up! It's fire and brimstone! A true slobber knocker! Vintage Kane! So after that orgasmic showdown, Kane begins to search for them until one of their phones go off. And his face is hilarious, it's more like he just realized that he forgot something. Did I really tag team with a superhero? Hey, you gotta credit originality here. I mean, they may have ripped off a few other horror franchises, maybe. But I mean, come on, I've never seen somebody kill someone by shoving a cell phone down their throat. I mean, look at this shit, it's fucking brutal. I don't care what anybody says, these deaths are fucking awesome. Man, I preferred William's one. This one, sure, it's original, but it's just random. Why a phone? Because he can. What are you not understanding? Inflicting pain turns him on. Holy shit! Meanwhile, Ty, Christine, and Mike meet up, but Kane is basically Kevin McAllister who has booby traps and tripwires set up everywhere. What is this? Jason Voorhees or Dennis the Menace? Oh yeah, they also use flies constantly to show where Kane might be, but, like, flies aren't scary. They're just annoying. Okay, maybe that one time. But anyways, Kane comes through the wall despite him setting the elevator off somehow, so I have no idea. But he eventually gets tasered, and... Jesus Christ, if you thought Darth Vader's scream was bad. <laughs> then they end up in Kane's hideout. And I love how the black chick is clearly terrified and disturbed by the eyes, but then Ty is just looking at this like, look, look at all this fucking money. Fun fact for you, they actually took the time to remove the eyes from every single bill on the wall. Time well spent. Then they find Kira before another amazing shot of Kane arriving, leading them to hide. Before Kane stares at Kira and... starts rubbing his dick. This is truly award-winning writing right here. Such a brave and bold move in the art of cinema. I mean, what other serial killer do you know of who would be brave enough to masturbate into the camera? Come to Papa. That doesn't count. This is when we get another flashback and we finally get to see why Kane is on such a rampage. You filthy little pig. You enjoy this, don't you? Oh, I can tell you do. I see that. I see what you're doing. Stop it. So let me get this straight. Oh boy. Kane is murdering absolutely everyone in his path because his mother caught him masturbating. That is literally the reason given. What the hell is wrong with these people? That was the best they could come up with. So they lure him out while trying to save Kira and then after all of this suspense, after all the creative deaths in this movie. Really? Creative? After all of that shit, and even after all the tools that he probably could have used, he just pushes a safe up against him. That's seriously the best you can do? Oh look, I wonder what's gonna happen. This totally isn't gonna directly steal the twist from Friday the 13th whatsoever. I'd like you to tell me. Why is that horse still alive? What a shocker! You can't know him. Know him? <laughs> He's my son. It's the exact same twist! They don't even try to fucking hide this. I mean, in the flashbacks, you can clearly hear her voice, and it's very clear that it's her voice. It's not somebody else's voice. And when all of these deaths happened, she's barely showed up in the film. I wonder why. Basically, they wanted revenge on Williams for stopping Kane. But why? It's not like he did anything, he didn't really stop him, he just fired one bullet and Kane ran away like a pussy! I mean, even then, what were the chances of Williams being given this case? Like, they have so many police on that team, I had imagined, so what if somebody else got it? Like, th this really could have backfired horribly wrong. Like, she could have wasted all this damn time. But fuck it. Margaret as a villain is so fucking funny. She's so over the top, it's like a cartoon. So she tries to convince him to kill her because of the tattoos, but he resists because she has the tattoos. These are killers fighting over ink work. This is the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. 
We get another flashback of Kane being forced to torture this lady who's tied to his bed, and eventually she even says, I don't like my mama. This is something you say when you're a little kid who got lost in a Walmart. Not when you're an adult about to be fucking killed. Margaret was also the one who inspired Kane to do the eye crap, but it's never really explained why, but it doesn't matter as he kills her anyway. I'm sorry, mama. I never meant to hurt I love her face right before she hits the wall too, it's actually pretty funny. But he's not done yet as he releases Kira and carries her away, but then they realize they have no story left so they just decide to have him rock back and forth in a catatonic state. But instead of just shooting him while she has a clear shot, she takes the time to put herself directly in front of Kane's face as close as possible and cocks the gun back so he can hear it. These people are fucking retarded. But what? Turns out there's no bullets left and it wakes him up in time for a double choke slam. Yeah, he's back! Go and get him, Mike! You know you're cheering for a domestic abuser, right? Don't tell me how to live my life! So Chavo gets the upper hand and he even manages to shove a damn rod through Kane's head and apparently Kane's got maggots for brains but somehow he's still fucking alive. He just gets right back up afterwards. I don't even care though, the special effects in this movie look really good. It looks gruesome as fuck. So they triple team Kane and knock him out the window. Oh yeah, I'm totally convinced he's dead and that they're completely safe. What a surprise. They must have really not wanted a sequel to this movie because they kill Kane off in the most over top and extreme way possible just to be sure he can't come back. Like he gets a pole in the eye, he hits a bunch of window sills on the way down. Which looks hilarious by the way. He falls through a glass and a shard of glass goes right through his heart. And they still made another fucking movie. So I guess after being a dickhead for the entire film now he's apparently a hero? No. No, fuck you. Oh well, they steal the keys off of Margaret, who twitches to signal that she might still be alive somehow. How the hell did she survive that anyway? Is it in their genes? How do these people come back from this shit? It's all so weird for a film with so many horror tropes and cliches that it avoids the obvious one by having the douchebag get his comeuppance and die. Michael, you didn't have to come back for us. He abused me for years and beat the shit out of me, but now he's okay in my book. Call it the Home Alone 2 effect. I didn't want to walk out of here alone. Um, why? What's stopping him from going back to beating her ass after this movie? Like, there's really nothing stopping them now. So he's still a prick! Never mind! Yeah, nothing really changed for this entire movie. This film is entirely pointless and it fucking sucks! A little bit. It has some suspenseful moments, and I do like the production design. The sets are nice, acting is fine, Kane is creepy as hell, and the sound design is actually incredible. But it's just flat out stealing from other franchises with nothing new except a killer fueled by masturbation and mobile phone killing. It's not the worst slasher, but honestly, skip it and you won't really miss much. Alright, I'll admit, this film really hasn't aged well, the characters are stupid, the fucking acting for Margaret's hilarious, and I don't think it's supposed to be. The only one who really does a good job is Kane himself, and the deaths and special effects are pretty cool, but when it tries to take itself seriously, that's pretty much when it just gets really fucking hilarious. Not a legitimately good film, but it is a pretty fun watch, even though it's retarded as hell, and the deaths are really entertaining, so overall I'd probably say it's a turn your brain off and enjoy type of horror movie. So what you're saying is... I was right. No, not really. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh my god, it's Kane! Oh shit, I'm out this bitch. Dude, run! Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh shit. I tried to warn you, don't make fun of me! Oh, Kane, no! Oh. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I always thought you were better than The Undertaker. How stupid do you think I am? God! Oh, no! Oh. Okay, I'm sorry! No! I know as soon as I walk out of here, you're gonna make fun of me and laugh your ass off at me! Please let me go, Mr. Jacob Goodnight. <laughs> Jacob Goodnight. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, I'm sorry. You need to feel my pain. Oh, Katie makes a hole. Oh, I'm sorry. 